This case is about a woman who very early on in her pregnancy decided she wanted to be a single mother. And she did not want the father of this child to have any visitation, her husband. And everything she did from that point on was to attain that goal. And she would stop at nothing to attain that goal. She tried several things in the system that you'll hear. The courts, law enforcement, Department of Children and Families, no one got on her side. And at the end, when there was no other option, she shoots him and kills him and claims self-defense. Now this couple, Doug Benefield and Ashley Benefield, were married. They had moved to Florida from South Carolina. They lived together in South Carolina. Now when they lived down here in Florida in Bradenton, they did not live together. Obviously there were issues. Um, Doug Benefield lived in his own apartment. Ashley Benefield lived with her mother, Alicia Byers, in a home with their daughter once she had, once she gave birth. She had this daughter who at the time was a toddler when she shot Doug. While they were living separate, they were still interacting with each other with the goal, the apparent goal of seeking reconciliation, reconciling this family and, and becoming a family. They were going to restaurants. They were going to Selby Gardens. They were hanging out at the pool at Doug Benefield's apartment complex. By all, of, all images, they looked like they were trying to reconcile. The problem was that is not what Ashley Benefield wanted. Although that's what she was portraying, that's not what she wanted. At the time that this shooting happened, they were planning to move to Maryland. Ashley's mother had inherited a home in Maryland and they were gonna to move to Maryland. Doug was also gonna to move to Maryland. They were gonna to continue to live separate and continue to attempt to reconcile, but they were all going to move to Maryland together. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the time that this happened, everybody was in moving mode. There were boxes everywhere, furniture, you know, beds up, upended. Uh, they had a U-Haul that they were using together. They had a pod that was in the defendant's driveway that they were putting all of their things into. And every day around this time, Doug Benefield was going to Ashley's home to assist her in putting these things into the pod, putting these things into the U-Haul, because the plan was that they were all going to pack up in the next few days and move to Maryland and continue to try and work on their relationship. The problem was Ashley Benefield knew that this was a ruse. She didn't intend to reconcile. She didn't intend to try to make this work. And the problem was there was a court hearing on September 30th of 2020. And at that court hearing, all of this was going to come out. It was going to come out that she was acting one way when she was by herself and she was acting another way when she was with Doug Benefield that she was telling him she wanted to work on things, that she wanted to get this marriage back together. But yet when separate, she was saying she had absolutely no intention of reconciling, did not want him around, um, and, and did not want this to work. On the 30th of September, this was going to come out. On the 27th of September, she shoots him and kills him. Three days before this hearing and three days before this information was to become public. Now, there was no one else at the house at the time of the shoot. It was just Doug and Ashley. Um, while Ashley's mother and child lived there, they had gone to the park. As soon as Doug got to the house, Alicia Byers takes her granddaughter and they go to the park. So the only people at the house are the defendant and the victim. And you're going to hear three very important things about this shooting. Number one, Ashley Benefield was the only person that was armed. It was her gun. She had it from before. It's not like she took it away from Doug. It was her gun. And Doug Benefield was not armed. He had no gun, no knife, no club, no weapon of any kind. Number two, 
Ashley Benefield was not injured. Law enforcement took pictures of her right after the shooting. And then again, you'll hear in a few days, they took more pictures. Because sometimes law enforcement, they know that bruises sometimes don't show up right away. That it takes several days for these bruises to show up. So they took pictures several days later. And you'll see those pictures, and you'll see that Ashley Benefield is not injured. She has some very superficial scratches on her midsection. Um, who knows where they came from? She had cats in the house, but who knows? But this is the only injury to her. And the third thing is the trajectory of the fatal bullet. Now, he was shot multiple times, but one of the bullets was fatal. The trajectory of that bullet was side to side. It was not straight on. Doug Benefield was not facing her, coming at her at the time that the fatal shot was fired. Now, as you go through this trial, it's a lot of information, a lot of timeline, but it's all very important to understand the tenor of this relationship between these two people. And it goes all the way back to when they met. Um, back in 2016. That was the end of August 2016, they meet. They were both involved in some political event, and they met. 13 days later, they married. Doug Benefield was 54 years old. Alicia Benefield, or excuse me, Ashley Benefield was 24 years old. So there was a 30-year age gap between the two of them. They knew each other 13 days, and they got married. Ashley Benefield was very into the ballet, had been an ex-dancer. Her dream was to start a ballet company. And lo and behold, her husband has the money and the connections to get this job. So he begins and she begins to put this ballet company together. And they do put a ballet company together. But before it can actually take off, it falls apart. Before they're married even a whole year, so in April of 2017, Doug Benefield has his vasectomy reversed because they want a child. Within weeks or months of the vasectomy reversal, the defendant is pregnant. So all within a year of being married, they have done a vasectomy reversal gotten pregnant, started a ballet, and the ballet has crumbled. While Ashley is pregnant, she decides she's too sick from the pregnancy, morning sickness, and that she needs her mother to take care of her. Her mother's in Florida, in Bradenton, Florida. So during her pregnancy, she moves to Bradenton, Florida to live with her mother so her mother can take care of her during the sickness. The two never lived together again. This was the last time these two lived together. They continued a long distance relationship when she first moved to Florida and um, continued trying to keep it together in communication. But about the same time as the ballet collapses, right about all of this time, Ashley Benfield starts complaints against the victim. Her complaints are things like, the main one was that Doug Benefield was poisoning her with heavy metals and her unborn child was being poisoned, that there was poison in her tea, that he was giving her poison. There were also other complaints, domestic violence complaints, um, different types of complaints, but not once will you hear that she ever said he hit her. Not once did she ever say he choked her, kicked her, anything like that. Even though she's making these complaints, the victim, Doug Benefield, is still trying to make this work. And you're going to see some text messages and hear some things. He's still trying to make this work. But she is having none of it. So at about the time that she's ready to give birth, Doug Benefield contacts an attorney here in Florida, Sarasota, Florida, Stephanie Murphy, and asks her to help. 
and asks her to help him write a letter to her, to Ashley Benefield, to state that he wants to be a part of the birth and he wants to be a part of this child's life and to please keep in contact with him. Ashley never answers that letter. That letter is sent via email on March 15th of 2018, which was several weeks early. She wasn't due yet. And the next day, she is induced, her pregnancy is induced, and she gives birth to a daughter. She never tells Doug. He doesn't even know his child is born for weeks. And she never responds to the letter. The way that Doug knows that this child is born is that Ashley Benefield starts filing complaints again. And based on these complaints, he figures out, oh, my child's born, and now we have more complaints. The complaints revolved around the poisoning and the things that I talked about earlier. And she filed for what's called a violation of injunction, or I'm sorry, she filed for an injunction. An injunction is our legal way of saying restraining order. So when someone wants a restraining order, they have to go through a process and go to court, and the court has to decide, and, and you get a restraining order. So that was her process. She was trying to get a restraining order against Doug, and the allegations were what I said to you. At the same time, Doug Benfield had not seen his child, had not met his child. So he did a cross complaint to say, please let me have contact with my child. <laughs> I've never even met my child. So this was set for a hearing. And it ended up going two days. It was, it was long. It was a long process, a lot of witnesses in family court. And it ended up going two days. It began in July, July 30th, 2018, and it finished on September 17th, 2018. And at the, at the conclusion of that hearing, the judge said, no. No, you are not getting a restraining order, and no, you cannot keep this man away from, your child, from his child. And granted Doug Benefield immediate visitation with his daughter. He met his daughter for the first time. She was six months old. And at the time when they were exchanging custody, which was at the sheriff's office for meeting the child, um, all of this animus had been going on. I mean, they had just had these hearings and, and all of this. And at that first time sharing, that's what they call it nowadays in family courts, time sharing. At the first time sharing, Ashley starts becoming very nice to Doug and says, basically, I'll go with you for the visitation. And that's what they do. The, the family goes off for visitation. And that begins a year approximately a year, of basically them working on the relationship, um, going out to restaurants, doing things, uh, hanging out together as a family, about a year. Now, Doug never moves in with Ashley. He keeps a separate residence. But after almost a year, so around August of 2019, Ashley just stops talking to him, just stops. And that's about the time Doug files for divorce. He finally says, okay, we're getting a divorce. Then what you'll hear is that the defendant started a whole new set of complaints. You will hear that she was involved in five different complaints, all revolving not around her this time, but about the child. Because now Doug has visitation with the child. So now these allegations are that Doug's abusing the child um, and... The allegations are that Doug's abusing the child. What you'll hear is that not one of these charges was ever prosecuted. Not one of these charges ever um, left law enforcement. So the defendant now has tried these five complaints after Doug filed for a divorce. Law enforcement's not helping her. No one has said that Doug cannot see this child. So they're still... Um, visitation going on. And in this, in this meeting of all these people, it was decided that Doug and Ashley Benefield will go for a psychological evaluation. So they do. And they go to Dr. Broder, 
And Dr. Broder does a very extensive psychological evaluation. And he meets with them together. He meets with them separately. He meets with them with the child, whose name is Emerson, by the way. She's a, a little girl. And at the time of the shooting, she was about not yet two years old. During this evaluation, and what you'll hear from Dr. Broder, is that Ashley Benefield acted very different when she was with Doug and when she was not with Doug. When she was with Doug, it was, we're moving to Maryland, we're going to work on our relationship, we're going to try and make this family work. When she's not with Doug, she's saying, no way, no how, I do not want this, I don't want to reconcile with him. And to Doug's knowledge, all he's hearing is, I want to reconcile. So that's what he knows. That report was coming out at that hearing on September 30th, 2020. So September 30th, 2020, Ashley knew the ruse was up. Now, there had to be a request from both sides, the husband and the wife, to release this psychological report. And at one point before the hearing, Ashley Benefield tried to get Doug to drop that so the report would not get out, would not be released. Doug refused. So that report was coming out on the 30th, and on the 27th, she kills him and claims self-defense. Now, you're probably going to hear a lot of information about Doug Benefield. Probably some negative things, not so nice things. I would just ask you to remember who's saying them and why. Just because someone speaks words does not make it true. So use your common sense as you go through this trial. This is a long story with a lot of information. But you'll see that this was a custody battle, that this mother was going to win at all costs. And the cost was the life of Doug Benefield. And that is murder. Thank you.